Hello. Shoyan here. I'm a carpenter based in Japan. Today I'm building a wood deck again, this time in a simple 2 meter by 4 meter shape. Thanks to recent technological advancements, I can now speak English in my own voice. It may sound a bit unnatural, but I hope you forgive me. This wood deck will be the last thing I build on this site. The beam will run lengthwise for 4 meters. The wood species is Hinoki cypress. Now I'm measuring and rough cutting the wood. The beam and joist are 105 millimeters square. The outer side uses not free wood, while the inner side uses KD wood. The deck boards are also made of Hinoki Cypress, measuring 45 mm by 120 mm. They're larger than typical deck boards. For all the timber, I make sure to trim a small amount off the ends to remove any dirt and pebbles, regardless of the size. If I don't do this, the blade of the planer or jointer will chip. It's ironic that the blade always seems to chip on a pebble, just after I've replaced it with a new one. It's not too bad if the blade chips at the edge, but it always seems to chip in the middle. As a result, there's an unwanted line on the wood when it's planed. That's why I make sure to remove any dirt and pebbles before planing any type of timber. I'll finish the visible parts with an electric plane. The adjustment tools for Hitachi and Makita are different. It might seem unnecessary to hold two tools when tightening one nut, but they're bundled together so they can be used for both brands. If I don't do this, the Makita tool will come out when I'm using Hitachi and vice versa. I only finish the top of the deck boards with an electric planer. When you use an electric plane to finish the surface, it will be neatly finished if you push it very slowly. Then, I cut it to length, chamfer it widely, finish the deck boards first and tidy up. Now I won't use them for a while. Now let's build the frame. Since the length of the deck board is decided first, I'll make the frame slightly smaller based on that size. Only the front of the frame will be visible, so I use the good looking straight grain surface for the front. Now I start cutting. Only a few pieces of wood are used, beams on four sides and three joists in the middle. For the joist, I use a lap joint, reversing the cheek on both ends. 
This means the window sash side is joined from above and the front side is joined from the bottom. This isn't a typical way of installation. I want to install the front posts slightly further back so that the legs won't hit the posts when sitting on this deck. So the post will support the joist. Once you see the installation, you'll understand. There are two types of workbenches for carpenters, one for mocking and the other for chiseling and cutting, which I am using now. Some carpenters cut on a high workbench, but in my case, I cut on a bench that is a little lower than the height of my knees. This way, I can use both hands while holding the wood with my knee. I think this style is the best. If a large 360 mm piece of wood were to be placed here, I could barely maintain my posture. This is the best height for cutting. Now I finish processing and cutting the wood. I start framing the deck. Marking and cutting wasn't difficult, but joining this size of a large square beam is a challenging task. It would be easier if two beams were joined in the middle, but that takes a lot of time. I'm joining the beams on the plastic posts. A plastic post can adjust in height freely and it takes the place of a jack. It wobbles a little while joining, but that stops once all four sides are secured. Next, I install the three joists on the inner side. As I mentioned, I join the back side of the joist from above and the front side from the bottom. The posts support the joists. Before securing the joist firmly, I measure the diagonals. If the diagonal lengths are the same, it means that the deck is square. I then secure the joist firmly.
Next, I make sure that the frame is level. The four plastic posts come in handy here because they can precisely adjust and maintain the height. After that, I measure the length of each post and cut the wood posts. I use a butt joint to join the frame and the wood post, which means simply attaching the end of the post without a tenon or mortise. I use screws to secure them. For a 90 cm deep open veranda, known as a Nureyan, the slope would be 1 cm or 12 mm. However, this wood deck is larger, so the decking would be quite low at the front if the slope was at this angle. It's fine for just sitting, but if a table is placed on it, everything on the deck will appear tilted. For that reason, I make the decking level if it is large. For the post on the concrete slabs, I attach a 2 cm high footing. This will prevent moisture absorption from the ground. Every time I build a wood deck, I find that I spend the most time working on the posts rather than the framing. The concrete slab is sloped, and the wood deck is level, so the height of each post differs. If one of them is made too high, all the other posts will wobble. It's challenging to cut and adjust the wood post. Now, I have set the posts to the right position and the wobbling has been fixed. I will move the deck away from the building once, so the coating can be applied to the areas that aren't visible. The building side of the beam, which is the most vulnerable to rot, hasn't been coated yet, so the painter will coat that part. It's one day after the coating. I will start installing the deck boards. The deck boards protrude 9 cm from the frame at both sides and 30 mm at the front. First, I set a straight edge on the side which can see the ends of the deck boards well. Then, I attach each deck board's end to align the position and secure it. You don't need to do this if you're going to cut the length after securing, but since I cut beforehand, I'm using a straight edge to align them. The boards are spaced one centimeter apart. I've marked the position on the beams so both ends can be secured at the right position by confirming the marks between the deck boards. I use nails to secure the deck boards. They are 90 millimeters long stainless steel round head nails. I make a small hole using a thin drill bit, not a large hole. This ensures the nail is firmly secured. I am often asked in nailing videos, why is the length of each nail different? To answer that question, the first nails are used to temporarily secure the wood and the next are lightly hammered so that it's easy to nail in a row. Because those nails are alternately lined up, their lengths look different, but actually they are the same length.
After securing both ends, I check that the boards are straight. You can also check each board one by one, but I check every other board. This gives you a sense of the left and right spacing between boards and it speeds up the process of straightening the boards. Next, I thoroughly remove the chalk. Unlike other coatings, this clear finish makes it very easy to remove the chalk. This is just a primer coat, so it will have another top coat applied. Now I finish building the 2 meter by 4 meter wood deck. The interior floor and deck boards are oriented the same way. It looks spacious from both inside and outside. It will need another coat, but it would be nice to have a cup of tea on this deck. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.